So what do you think, mate? One ride in the crappy British winter and it looks a bit different to what it did. I mean, it's fairly clean by my standard. Now I just kind of ride it, hose it down, lube it up. You told me off for lubing the chain too much last time. What do you think of this chain this time? Yeah, it's looking good. Um, for your standards, Rob, I would say this is pretty much ready to go. <laughs> Looks just like it did the day that I bought it, right? Yeah, a couple of hours afterwards, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I've been riding it a lot. I've done probably 300 miles on it. Yeah. And I bought it in a few weeks ago, change of brake pads. But other than that, I've just been riding it as you would in the UK, wet, slop, winter. And every ride, it just ends up looking like this. So what, what are we going to do today? Well, not a great deal, Rob. I think it's pretty much there, ready to go. <laughs> no, the big thing is, is this is this last couple of weeks, we've been seeing so much of this now. If it was an ordinary bike, you'd look outside and think, I'm not going out. But with an e-bike, you just look out and go, this is going to be great fun. And it is. But it does come down to the maintenance. And you're going to get people turning around and saying that, you know, <sighs> You shouldn't have to do this level of maintenance. But as I've said before, you, you can't go and do the RAC rally, park the car in the garage and pull it out the following year and expect it to perform the same. And it's exactly the same with, with, with the bike. You know, people are saying, oh, you know, I've got a, a, um, a blue and red flashing light on my bike. And the reason for it is they go out and it comes back like this. And naturally it needs washing, you know, our, uh, team bikes that were out in Wales at the weekend and uh, they were absolutely plastered and you've either got to hit it with a with a good hose pipe or sometimes a little power washer but which isn't a problem but you just need the to get them back in and then we can show you what you really need to do mm. so I'm really busy at the minute Rob because I would have loved to have washed it for you <laughs> but I'm going to leave that for you to do okay well I normally just get a power washer down at the car wash and yeah. blast it into yeah. all of the bearings and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, today's going to be different. <laughs> no, all joking aside, I mean, you, you raise a point about maintenance on bikes. I think a lot of people, myself included, are not used to, well, a bike is a mechanical device yeah. or traditional bikes and just mechanical devices. Whereas these are a little bit different motors, harnesses, switches, all of that kind of stuff. So I guess there's a question around how much maintenance should a user have to do on one of these compared to a normal bike if any what what do you think uh, to be honest you know the battery's tucked away in the frame um you've got this little tcu on the top which is you know it's a development having it up there instead of on the side um we seem to have five steps forward and then a couple of steps back um one of the issues is is that this is so much better to use for a rider you can see everything and you know see what mode you're in how your battery is so in through here where the cables go it's not sealed so you're going to get water go in there and that's what happened to mine because i've had a replacement tcu to be fair on this yeah. one and yeah and i have washed it a lot yeah believe it or not yeah and i think because i'm using it so much it's getting washed almost after every ride and then yeah. water did get in that part yeah. and into yeah into there the, really the main things that you need to do is you know be careful of the tcu and the connections underneath the left hand side the, the cover in there you know that when the 2019 bike come out everyone was saying oh there's a hole in the back of it you know blah 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 we need to do something about it but some of the other manufacturers they just put a couple of cases down the side of their motor the motors are fine they don't need to be sealed up in a box because obviously you know you want the air to flow around the motor to keep the motor cool if you've encased everything too much it's going to get hot and that's going to create problems and water will get everywhere so the best thing to do again it's more of an expense but the best thing maintenance wise for an e-bike is a, a compressor now you can buy a proper little compressor for about 80 quid, 80 or 90 quid, and that's the best thing. Even if this wasn't an e-bike, you could wash it down with tons of water. If you've got an airline to blow the water away, 
it's going to help you know even as i say with an ordinary bike with a bottom bracket with wheel bearings headstock and things like that so when you so a compressor that is just a consumer compressor you could get one plug it into your mains and it will yeah. just okay you know there's a couple of companies out there now that are doing you know a nice little package for around about 80 quid and you know people go out and they spend that on a power washer but the best thing in the cycle trade is an airline i have seen someone use a leaf blower okay which might sound ridiculous but to be fair it would do the same sort of uh, job you're just blowing the water away from the bike the nice thing is you know with the e-bike i think that the customer can get involved in it you know there's that there's been people in the past that say, oh, my local dealers told me that if I take this off or take that, I invalidate the warranty. It's a load of old baloney. Because the only thing, if you if you undo the, the motor, take it apart, then yes, you're invalidating your warranty, but you don't need to. Um, and it really just comes down to general maintenance that you do on an ordinary bike. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're going out and you're riding something, you just really want to nut and bolt the bike after every ride, just check that everything is good. Um, and, and you also know that, you know, if you went out on this at the weekend, it wouldn't feel like it would have done the weekend before. Mm. So you just need to spend a little bit of time um, and just get it back into order. And, you know, things like uh, where we are riding, all this is, is pretty sandy. Yeah. And this is just like, you know, grinding pace. And, um, you know, people turn around and say about brake pads and so on. If you have a look at brake pads, there's not a huge amount of meat on them from the beginning. So when you've got this sort of grinding paste, just rubbing it on your fingers, you can see that it's taking, you know, taking the skin away. So that's what it's doing with the brake pads. So you can actually do a set of brake pads over the weekend, you know, if you're riding in sandy conditions. So. Yeah, I think like you, you said it already, we ride a lot and I think maybe more on e-bikes in the winter because you've got that extra little bit of assistance. And for me, that's a little bit more like motivation to to get out and ride your bike. If it's pouring down with rain and you've got a pedal bike, you might not, or I certainly wasn't as inclined to go out and ride it, whereas this, I tend to. And especially when you've planned something in with a group of mates and you just put the date in the diary and you just go out, whatever the weather. But I think it's one of those things as well. You've ridden, you know, through the sort of winter, uh, through the summer, sorry, and uh, you've done all your trails and they've been great. But if you're riding in the same places, you're just riding over the same same old trails all the time. That's where when it gets a bit wet, you think, wow, this is going to spice it up a little bit. I need to be a bit careful here. And and also understanding with the bike sliding around what, what how you need to change your riding style. Mm. Specialised always seem to have this knack of launching their lovely bikes just before the winter. <laughs> so uh, Maybe in California it's still sunny and dry. Yeah. Uh, do they sell them in California? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> So that's the easy bit now, Rob. It's down to you to uh, go and get dirty. He's doing it. He's doing it himself. <laughs> yeah, it's not a problem. It was just a bit of a coincidence that the phone rung for you just as the bike needed to be washed, Rob. <laughs> but yeah, been down that road before. <laughs> Literally just washed it. No sponge, no soap, no nothing. Just give it a little bit of a a wash off to try and get the worst off of it. First thing we would do after this is just undo the TCU and let's just see the amount of water. It's sealed to a certain degree but the thing is with water it's one of the worst you know flooding homes and everything it just gets literally everywhere and it wrecks everything. This is our airline which obviously is a little bit more uh, powerful than the average one but what we would do now is literally try and blow as much water off as it as possible you know. and just things we do Rob that are just a little bit different it's not really rocket science but um, when you come in originally with your TCU issue as you can see, for the winter, what we do is we we just tape them up, basically. Just and seal what's them up that like? Just more. just regular just, electrical tape or something? Just literally insulating tape, electrical insulating tape. Um, you know, because on here, this is where the bike is updated from. So uh, 
this is a rubber plug and it seals to a certain degree but at the end of the day just giving it a little bit more double protection as you know Rob always works well underneath this side here where you charge your battery from this is where all your electrics is you know so and there's not a huge amount so you need an 8mm allen key just put it in anti-clockwise and the pedal arm self extracts once you've removed the pedal arm you need a 3mm allen key and you have four little 3mm three three allen key bolts here so if we just undo those and people say to me you know with this invalidate the warranty it wouldn't we've spoken to specialized about it and and they're happy for people to remove the cover and to keep things clean do and you think they should put this kind of stuff in in the user manuals as as guides for people because i think a lot of people just don't <clears throat> would probably like to do it but they maybe just don't don't know how to or that you need to yeah I think to be honest you know with the price of the bikes and everything that a little maintenance video would definitely help because people say oh I didn't know I could do that or, or whatever so but yeah the more that you can help you can see now Rob that the water has got in here you see how grubby it is see in here all around the battery terminal we've uh, gone past the seals a bit but the latest thing at the moment is people are bringing their bikes in with their lights flashing and they've been told that you know WD-40 is the best thing and it really isn't you know the electrics need to run dry there's um, it's a very low low voltage setup so if you're spraying a silicon spray in there it's just something else that it's got to go through so please, please guys, don't use anything. No WD-40, no contact cleaner, no Vaseline, nothing. They need to just run dry. Because all, um, all the parts are sealed. So this is a power lead that's been taken off. And you can see these green things here, which are, are seals. So by spraying it, taking this out, spraying it with WD-40, you're creating a problem. So what we do now, is go back to the old faithful airline you can just see you know just a couple of minutes on an airline a little bit of tissue and that contact there is nice and clean again and the power cable would go back in so like so this here is just like an ordinary bottom bracket on a, a conventional bike so just get the airline in here blow it all out get the water away from it and uh, do the same on the other side and that's just gonna help it as you can see I've just turned the bike on no red and blue lights these are the main things that we've done so by sealing this up sealing the TCU up taking this cover off blowing it all out giving it a little clean up will do the job and that will just save everyone time because they won't need to keep going back to the shop because they have a, an issue. One customer said to me the other day, he said, but Chris, we shouldn't need to. You know, we shouldn't need to be doing maintenance on our bike. I find that one really difficult because whatever you have, you know, your car needs servicing, you know, your motorbike, everything needs looking after. And the more time that you can uh, spend, you know, after a good, you know, ride out, Give it a little clean up it's you know you're, you're spending loads and loads of money on a on an e-bike and uh you know it's even more reason really just to spend a little bit more time you know looking after it and giving it a clean and i think you know that's how i basically sort of started is that you know i, I saw something and i just wanted to take it apart i just wanted to find out how it worked and what you could do to it to to you know improve it and uh you know, I've got guys now that used to ring me up all the time going, Chris, you know, what should I do here? What should I do there? And it's really funny because on the forums now, you actually see them answering all the questions. If they get stuck, they, you know, they, they just say, I'll give Chris a ring. But um, it's really nice to see how people have come, come on over the last couple of years with their level of maintenance. You know, 
Do you put me in that bracket as well? Um, no, no, Rob. Sadly, <laughs> we don't know. I've been all right though, haven't I? I managed to. Uh, oh yeah, I think I put the tire back tire on the wrong way round. Yeah, no, you've done good there, Rob. Yeah, for sure. No, it's um, with yourself. Sometimes you know you're better off to leave it, <laughs> and uh, you're definitely one of well, them. We, we wouldn't be able to make these videos, would we, if I just took care of it and looked after it like. Like a um, a caring user would. No, again, you know, with the guys that you ride with, they're all, you know, learning from it. They're all sort of like, you know, looking after their own bikes. So I've said to them that if they took you out a little bit more often, maybe, you know, they could sort of help you out a little bit, Rob, because <laughs> being here, obviously you are Barsha's tea boy. Um, maybe we need to just move you up a level now. <laughs> So. Well, maybe I'll be able to um, be in charge of the hose pipe one day. It's quite an aspirational role. I'm not so sure, Rob, because it's, it's quite an important job and I don't think you're ready for it yet. <laughs> um, we did try moving you up to a tyre fitter, um, which you didn't really pass the test. So, But no, all joking around, Robs. She's getting there. She's cleaner than you normally have it. Not clean by our standards. But uh, that's the basic things, and that's what the guys really need to be doing. You know, the worrying thing is when you see bikes come in here and, you know, someone has turned around and said to them, this is what you need to do, and that's what you need to do. Well, when the bike comes, it has all the seals on the cables and everything else, and, you know, they're there for a reason. Um, you know, people say, oh, you know, how waterproof is it, and so on. Well. You know, out on a normal ride, you don't normally have any problems. You know, the favourite one is Monday morning when the, the phone goes and, you know, Chris, I went out on the bike, had a fantastic day, didn't miss a beat. I washed it last night, gone to use it today, and I've got the red and blue flashing lights. And that's really what it comes down to. So, obviously, this is a Kinevo, but we do exactly the same for the Levo. Just silly little things by just sealing the, the TCU, the cables up. We do a little bit of a modification on the cable to, to make that more waterproof as well because a lot of the problem, as I say, the cables, the, you know, the water gets on the cables and it can run anywhere and it always runs to uh, where it shouldn't be, so. Good. So things like in here, Rob, if you have a look and you see that all the grit and, and crud gets in here. So when you're changing gear, the chain can't sit properly on the teeth. So just things like this, what we would do, you know, just get the airline and blow it out. So you can now see that it's clearer, so the chain's gonna sit better on the teeth. It's not gonna be raised up, so it's not gonna cause you to jump. So, we also have little brushes like this as well that you can, you can buy from anywhere, but just put them in, just give them a clean out for the stuff like here, you see. Yeah, you know, twigs. Like twigs and... Yeah. Normally on the smaller gears is where it's problem, you know, the biggest problems are because it's such a small area for the chain to grip on. So just go round, just make sure they're nice. And again, things like that just prolong the life of the chain in the cassette. So if you, if you see inside here, Rob, you know, it's still not mega clean. So you can see your little pads are there, they're all crying out for help. All these little things here is just where it's just grit and it is, you know, I wouldn't expect everyone to go to the lengths that we're going now, you know. But this is what you would do if a bike came in and I know you do, um, you sell occasionally bikes that have been, what do we call it, pre-loved? Yeah. Sorry for the mess of the bench, but if you look over here, this is, in for a full service. We literally take everything off of it and then rebuild it. You know, 
we're not going to do that with yours today because you're not the best of payers. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, this this guy now has had his bike for close to two years. He just wanted us to go through it. So literally the whole thing is completely gutted, motor out, every single thing off. And uh, when she goes out of here later on, everything could be like new again. So, and even coming down to, you know, to your one, Rob, all we've literally done is just taking it out and just soaked it with a hose pipe. You know, normally if you look at in here, how dirty it is, we would normally, you know, have a bit of soapy water and, and give it a proper clean out. So if you have a look at there, Rob, so that's a new set of pads that you had. You can see there's not a lot of meat in them. You can see there's a bit of a ridge in them as well. But with, with this, you know, you need to keep it nice and clean. Just give it a little bit of a clean off. They do disc brake cleaner, which is quite good. Um, don't use anything else on because you can t contaminate the pads. But obviously we've put Sinteds in for, for you, which is, uh, you know, a harder pad, not as good at braking, but it certainly lasts a bit longer. But like on here, you can see it's either picked up a little stone or something and it's worn a groove in there. What we would do with these now is just give them a clean up, a little bit of a roughen up, make sure the pads are level and they're good to go again. So the pads were pretty mucky, the pistons behind the brakes were, so it was just a case really of just uh, making sure it's all good. The crazy thing is, is you know, as I said to you, it's great, you know, getting them nice and clean and, but the way things are at the moment, it's just, you know, you're back out there later on and it's gonna be absolutely plastered again. So it does always feel like you're working on your bike, but you know, if you just spin the wheel, it actually spins freely now without it sort of grinding. So, it would have been nice to have spent a little bit more time, uh, you know, just uh, with a sponge and getting it a little bit cleaner. But that's all superficial, I guess. I mean, yeah. we've done the main stuff, which is yeah. get all the crap off the drivetrain, sorted out the connector, dried it all off. Yeah, the main thing really was to show everyone that how easy it is to remove the cover and to just blow it out, you know. Um, there's nothing worse than you know arranging with the lads to go out for your bike, you know, out for your ride, and you go out to the garage and turn your bike on, and you've got that horrible red and blue light. You know, it's just ridiculous. So, just by doing what we're doing, you know, the bike is nowhere near as clean as that we would like it. But uh, obviously, it's all about time at the moment. But if we go to it now, we turn it on. Fingers crossed. No, it, it'd be fine. It'd turn on. Do you think the manufacturers could do a little bit more to water seal them? Because I guess that, you know, we, we do ride them in their mountain bikes. So in people's minds, they can be ridden in all kinds of conditions. Yeah, truthfully, I think that, you know, <clears throat> I wouldn't say they made a boo-boo because they've listened to what people want. They don't want the batteries down the side. They want the battery concealed. and. That's why I said earlier on, it's sort of like five steps forward and then a couple of steps backwards because you look at a bike, you know, when they released it and you thought, wow, you know, this is really good and so on. But, you know, then you start, you, you know, you need loads of bikes out there to be able to get the feedback from the customers. That, you know, it's okay building a bike and, you know, a couple of them being out there and being ridden in the summer, you know, <laughs> you don't come across the problems, but, you know, over here, through the winter, you know, testing the bikes, the more bikes that are out there, the more feedback you're getting. And it is annoying, you know, when, you, when you're on the Facebook page or the Levo Canevo page and, you know, you've got people moaning because this has happened and, and so on. And, you know, there was one case recently where the guy had had a, you know, a problem with his bike and, you know, <clears throat> I'm really funny, I, I want to get the bike in, I want to find out why, what can we do to improve it? So. We contacted the guy and asked him to bring his bike in. We changed it out for a new bike, which, you know, didn't go down so well with some people. But the reason we've done it is, that, you know, the more problems that we see, the more ways that we can try and improve it. And, and Specialised are all for that. You know, Marco come over from Switzerland. He's one of the 
the designers and he spent time you know out riding with lots of different groups not just with us he, you know he was out with you know people from down south and middle of the country and up north to try and get the feedback and everyone's saying the same we want you know bigger batteries and we don't ever want a problem but <clears throat> The never to have a problem comes down to, you know, improving things and, you know, I think now they're working on a, a different cable which is slightly shorter. If I'm 100% honest, I'm not so sure that it's going to solve the problem like we're all hoping, but um, it's a step forward and, you know, it is annoying for people that have issues, but you know, we don't just sell Specialized, we sell other brands as well, and and they all have their own little issues. Um, the amount of Specialized that are sold, obviously there's gonna be, you know, more complaints and more people saying, well, you, you know, this isn't good and, and so on. But when you start getting the other, other brands having their own pages and, you know, it, it, it'll all work exactly the same. You know, you get the negative people on there you know, we have so many people ring us up and say thank you, you know, for for what you've done for us. But, it, you know, we're not doing anything that anyone else can't do. It's just a case of it frustrates us as much as the end user. So things like, you know, sealing up the TCU, I'm not saying that it's going to cure everyone's problems, but it, it, it it's something else that we can do just to sort of like help. Um, I know for sure that, uh, you know, Marco come away from the UK, um, with a different attitude in the way that the guys ride and the conditions that they ride in. You know, the riding over here, you know, is pretty extreme. It's like, you know, down south, you know, the, the riding is pretty good. You know, around here, it's all pretty flat. There's nothing to test in, but you know, when you start going into Wales and, you know, then you start going up north to the peaks and whatever, you know, the bikes in the peaks really do take some stick. You know, the weather, is is not normally the best but it's such a beautiful place to you know to go to and the riding is just manic you know with the big rocks and slates and everything so that's completely different than riding over the lookout or at surrey hill so that's what i think that you know marco took away from him is that we need bikes for up north that are more durable and you know people go on about the rims you know the rims are, are soft and this is soft and and it's really not, you know, if you if you land heavy on a rock, you're going to flat anything, you know. Um, car wheels bend through potholes. So it's not that the wheels are soft, it's, there, there isn't a wheel out there that's never going to never gonna bend. Um, and a lot of people change the stuff because they can, that's the, the thing, not because that they really need to or the stuff is that bad. If the stuff was that bad, you know, Specialised would just turn around and say, let's get it changed out. So it's, it, it's very difficult, you know. Um, the old bike, I think, was, you know, so good. Um, you know, the next thing that had to come, there had to be huge improvements. And I think that Specialised have done that. You know, the bike has moved on so much. We've had a few setbacks now with the electrical side, mainly the power cable and with the water ingress. So. They don't just sit back and go, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, it's not great, but, you know, we'll leave it. You know, they, they're working all the time and, you know, I've not had any of the other manufacturers that we deal with come to us and say, you know, the designer of the bike wants to come and spend time in the workshop, he wants to come and spend time out riding. You know, it's bad enough trying to get the bikes because if you haven't forward ordered them, then, you know, they're not going to come through. But you know for Marco to come out and and listen to the riders and I think it was nice for for the riders as well because they felt part of it you know and you know I used to go to a, I used to go to um, a meeting in January with a, a supplier where there was probably 200 dealers and we all actually felt part of the company because they turned around and said well what do you think of this and you put your input into it and um, when you saw it arrive on the shelf, you felt, you know, oh, you know, I've had a little bit of a say. And I think that's what, you know, is nice with um, Marco coming over because people are now being able to say, well, that, I said that, that, you know, that this needs to be done. So it feels like they're actually taking part in, in designing or changing the, the, the bits on the bike. So, yeah, let's hope it continues and, uh, you know, we have a, 
drier periods. Well, thanks. No thanks worries. for cleaning my bike. Yeah, you bugger. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Rob. <laughs>